I hope you're having a great bee season wherever you are in the world. I got some cool stuff I want to share with you today. So let's get started. I've got some good news and I've got some bad news and I've got some amazing news. Well, let's start with the good news. We caught another swarm. This has been an amazing spring here in Northeast Georgia. This has by far been one of my best springs ever. I've actually lost track of how many swarms I've caught. I've caught some on the property, but I've caught a bunch from uh, some of my friends in the area that are about three to five miles or even further away from our home. And I got a call from a friend of mine where I was keeping this swarm trap. Uh, we've had it hanging since March. And he called me, I think two weeks ago, and he says, I see a lot of bees. And, uh, and he wasn't kidding. I just finally got a break in my schedule uh, two days ago, and I brought the swarm back home here on the honeybee farm. But as you can see, the bad news is, it's kind of bad news, there's a ton of bees in here. So this means these bees have gone through at least one or two brood cycles already. This is a really built up swarm, as you can see by the bees bearding on the front of the swarm trap. You really don't want to wait that long before you get them home and put them in their permanent hive. So we got to do that today and I've got all my tools here with me and I even have this particular tool. I think there's a chance we might need this. This is a weapon of a Jedi Knight. Seriously guys, this is one of my go-to. I keep this with me every time I do a cutout or every time I have to work with deep frames like this one. As you can see, if you just look at the depth of this knife, it's a serrated knife. This is what they call a tree limb cutter. And um, I bought this at a place called The Sharp Shop. You can look them up. You can just Google The Sharp Shop dot com or the sharp shop on google and i'm sure you're going to find it it's kind of expensive but it's well worth it when you do the kind of work that we do if you're doing cutouts and if you're working with deep frames and i don't use foundation with my frames i let the bees draw that comb all the way down once in a while they kind of take a little zigzag and the only way to get the frames out is to gently use that serrated blade to cut through and there's a possibility we might have some of that today we're going to find out in just a minute so i've got to open them up and they're going into their permanent home it's a 14 frame layens hive this swarm trap holds seven frames we're going to put them into a 14. I even think this one holds 15 or 16 because one of the things that I do a little bit different than Dr. Leo is, is that my frame width or the top bar, Dr. Leo's is one and a half inches. I use one and three eighths and sometimes one and a quarter just for the brood comb spacing, but I just use it throughout the whole hive. I just do one and three eighths all the way across for all the top bars on all of my frames. Um, you can research that if you want to go to uh, Michael Bush's website, Bush Bees. Um, you can look him up and find out some of the research that's been done on comb spacing. I'm in favor of a tighter space brood nest. One and three eighths is what I like to use. So anyway, I've got some amazing news that I'm going to share with you while we're working. I've got uh, just so many days where I can shoot videos. And um, so I even brought the smoker out because there's so many bees here. So we're going to get this going here. Let's get this party started. So I've got, um, I've got one of these um, hive beetle entrance traps. It's not really a trap. It's kind of like a baffle. It's the circular one. I find the bees have the hardest time learning how to use this thing. So I, uh, I don't have them use it the very first day I install them. So I'm just moving that out of the way and I keep the screw handy right here. They're just going to be removed from this hive. Let me get this weed out of the way. They're going to get removed from the swarm trap that they're in. They're going to naturally go to this location, find it's not there. Then they're going to come in here. It'll be about a three hour period of discovery for the bees, but that's okay. They'll do it. So let's get them going. The sooner the better. Now I've got this cover screwed on. So I'm going to unscrew the cover. 
No doubt they probably have propolized it too. But we'll get them going here. Oh, the amazing news that I wanted to share with you is uh, some interesting information my daughter shared with me, actually. She brought something in the house the other day, and it was from an Instagram post. It was from some research that's been done on the frequency of the sound that honeybees make as they're buzzing and humming. It's a frequency that's actually beneficial for humans. And let me just get this lid off here while I'm talking. Oh, this thing is just boiling over with bees. I'm gonna need to just smoke them a little just to make them move off of the frames. Look at all those bees in here. Isn't that beautiful? All right, let me back up. See if I can talk and do this at the same time. So my daughter, I was telling you, she found this uh, Instagram post and it was about the frequency of the sound that the honeybees make as they're working. In Slovenia, for example, I gotta get this first frame out. It's uh, the, always the hardest one. In Slovenia, oh, and this has got honey on it too. It's heavy, guys. This is gonna take a lot of finger strength to lift this one up. The good thing is it doesn't feel like it's been glued to the sidewall, so if I can just get my fingers on it good, yeah. All right. There's, this is a good frame of honey. And let me just see if I can gently pull this out. This has got to go slow and steady, guys. This is drawn way down. I did break a little bit of the honeycomb, but look at how nice this is. This is a good frame. This is the outer frame. Look at that. Wow. Oh, I just love looking at this. This is so gorgeous. Look how nice those bees. They went past the bamboo skewer, which I'm always happy when they do that. Sometimes they stop halfway, but they didn't have much choice if they wanted a bigger colony. They had to work and build more comb. So anyway, I forgot what I was saying. Look at all that. This has got a big wad of propolis here. Now that's good for you too. So the studies about frequencies, I just wanted to get back to that for a second. As I install these frames, I got some empties here that I'm putting in too. So in Slovenia, this is kind of a regular thing where they, um, they have bee spas where you can um, go and you can lay on a bed of bees. I think Dr. Leo's got one of those too. The bee bed, I think that's cool. Um, the theory is, which I believe there's, it's, it's gone beyond theory. I think it's gone kind of past theory, which is exciting news, really. It's the amazing news I was trying to tell you about. Boy, this another heavy frame. Very nice. They are just building and building. It's dripping a little bit of honey. So I'm just trying to work gently. So in Slovenia, they have these spas where you can go and you can lay on a bed of bees. I know Dr. Leo is uh, also an advocate for that too. I don't have a bee bed, but the little bit of research that I've been able to gather, and I've got a link that I'm gonna put in the description below. I just gotta get these frames together. The application has been for folks that have suffered post-traumatic stress disorder. Look at that. It's beneficial. Let me, let me just show you this. This is also beneficial. So they say beekeepers live longer than non-beekeepers and it's because of the hum of the bees. Well, yeah, it's interesting that there's not only uh, the beekeepers saying it, but there's also a science now to it that supports that. What it is, is the, uh, the frequency of sound can actually heal human tissue. That's amazing, isn't it? That is truly amazing. And so um, what I wanted to tell you was that after I check that out, 
um, and I found an article, and I, I'm sharing it with you guys so that you can check it out. Uh, I'm, I'm not the first to discover this, so I'm just sharing with you something that came across my, uh, my day. Look at that. Look at those bees. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they've already hatched out a, a brood cycle. They're on their second brood cycle. Those frames are worked all the way down. So what I did was I made a recording that I wanted to share with you guys. So I've got the observation hive. You've probably seen that in one of my recent videos. And I made a recording because not everybody has access to bees like this. And I would love for every one of you to have that, but I figured I'd do the next best thing for you. And I made a recording, just gorgeous. Look at it, it's straight as an arrow. Look at, I'm telling you guys, I don't use foundation, but look at, look at that. That is just perfection. Good for them. Now, in my other videos where I hang swarm traps, I, I bring a level with me. And it's so important that that hive is level side to side, and this is why. So I, I'm so far, I don't need that big knife that I brought out. So I made a recording. And uh, this video that I'm shooting now just basically explains what that video is about because all it is is the sound of honeybees. And I hear hawks flying around. My chickens are out, so I hope that uh, they don't harass my chickens. Okay, so if you uh, look at my channel, I've got a video, and I haven't even made a title for it yet, it's going to be the sound of honeybees or something like that. Or honeybee frequency. I've got to come up with a title quick here. So as at the time, obviously, of shooting this video, I have not created the completed version of that therapeutic video. But I want to just let you know what it's all about. And the way it works is you can download the uh, sound portion of it if you want to. And you can listen to it before you go to bed. You can just put some earbuds in or if uh, you've got some nice headphones. And you know, I, I made, uh, I'm thinking of making two versions. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do, but one version is just gonna be completely just the sound of the honeybees. Now I'm gonna put my mic down in here and I want you to listen. It's something like this. Okay, I'm going to put my mic back on. Now, honey, honeybees make sounds for different reasons. Queenless hives make a different sound than a hive that has a queen. So what I did was I, I made a couple recordings. The first one I didn't care for much. It was um, all, during the day when the bees are active and they were going in and out of the tube that I have for the observation beehive. So they are going in and out and it kept making this really weird noise of them traveling through the tunnel. You know, it was like zoom, zoom. And it was a little distracting, I thought. So what I did was uh, last night, I had a little trouble sleeping because when I start brainstorming, I have trouble sleeping. And I thought, well, what am I gonna do? Well, I said, well, it's 4 a.m. I can't sleep. Those bees are not traveling in and out of that tunnel right now. So why don't I take the uh, microphone down and just go ahead and do a little recording and that's what i did so the 4 a.m recording is what i've got and i've got one that's just of the bees working well i i guess yeah they work all the time they work day and night and you'll hear by the humming sound uh that's no joke they really do work all day and all night now i need to dump these bees in here and I just want to make sure the queen's not running around on the sidewall somewhere. Boy, they're being so good. You got to see this. I'm going to bring this camera over. You got to check this out. These are some nice gentle bees. There they are. So they got to they got to get dumped out. And they have to go into the hive that we put them in right here. Okay. Well, let's get ready to do the dump. They seem 
pretty chill today and it's a little later in the day than I care to be in here. I try to get in between like 10 a.m. to maybe 2 p.m. Well, it's after 3 and I'm here now and I like to do this a lot earlier. But they're, um, they're being pretty decent about me being here. But we're going to do the big bump here and that could change everything. They could get excited. Well, thank goodness for European honeybees, right? The Africanized ones, oh my gosh, I don't know how people do it, but they do. And I give them a lot of credit for that. So let me just button it up in here before I um, do the big bump. This hive holds 15 frames instead of 14, but I'm gonna put some cover boards on here even though it doesn't really need them. One, two. It's got the extra ledge on it. So I'm gonna put the cover boards in. I'll just give them an extra layer of protection there. Protection from hive beetles is what I'm referring to. And I'm gonna use Swiffer wipes for that. I always keep I always keep Swiffer wipes with me. Just use the unscented kind and just put those in any of the cracks that are still left after you button down a hive. Put them in the cracks, the bees will propolize them. Hive beetles can't get through them. As long as there's only one way in or out of this hive, they're gonna be great. Okay, well, let me do the bump and uh, we'll get out of here and then we're gonna finish talking about honeybee frequency and the healing properties of it. Let me just go ahead and get this taken care of so they can just get to work. Okay, so shake them off right there. A little more. That was kind of a wimpy bump. That first one. Okay. But now we get to the bigger bump with all the bees. I broke the arm on the swarm trap. There they go. There, now we gotta hide this from them. Put it back there. We didn't even need our special tool, which is fine, but at least we had it. So always when you don't have it that you need it. Now they're gonna start marching in. Well, let me zoom the camera and so you see. So this is what they do. This is what bees do after you dump them on the ground in front of a hive. They start walking up the leg and they'll go in. And all the forage bees that are coming back, we got a ton of them too. All the forage bees coming back, they're gonna go in after they see that their main box is gone. In fact, I might even, there, some of them are finding it behind the hive. You see it back there? There's a few bees that are going back there and say, oh, it's over here. And the other bees are saying, no, I'm pretty sure this is the new address right here. So they'll go in. We'll just give them a little time and they'll settle down. So let me just step away here so we can finish talking about what we were talking about. So just to wrap things up, guys, um, I have all these, uh, things that I want to film and I only have so many days where I can do things like this that I can show you. I want to share these things with you. So, so today you got to see an install of a very well established swarm that was caught. This swarm's probably been in the box at least a month. I would say it might even be uh, five or six weeks and you can see how quickly they build up in the spring. So thank goodness they're in a bigger hive now and they'll be able to uh, use that all they'll be able to use all that space in here. No problem. They've got uh, they, they had seven frames now they have 15 so it gave them almost double the space and This is a much smaller hive than I prefer, but I'm out of 
hives. I've got rich man problems. I've caught so many swarms this year. I don't have enough hives to put them in and I don't have enough time to build more hives. So anyway, they're getting what they get. So they're in a 14 frame. They'll probably uh, be fine for the rest of this year. I believe that'll be just fine. We're right at the end of the honey flow and I don't feed my bees. So once that nectar shuts off, they're gonna stop building. So anyway, let me just finish this up. I, I was so thrilled to find out this information about the honeybee frequency and how it helps heal human tissue. That's mind blowing. So I made a recording for those of you that don't have access to the recording equipment or if you don't have a way to get to be close to a beehive or lay on top of a bee bed. Now I think that would be pretty cool. I think if you had to, if you had the choice of laying on a bee bed, which by the way, if you don't know what that is, look it up. You're not actually laying on bees. You're laying on a hive and you're feeling the vibration through your body, okay? Uh, but I think the next best thing, that would be the gold standard. If you could lay on a honeybee bed, great. If you got access to one, do it. If you have access to a hive where you can just sit right next to it, or if you can be near a tree where the bees are pollinating, like sometimes we have these cherry trees that blossom in our area and you can just hear the sound of that buzzing. It's gorgeous, it's music. And it's no wonder, it's therapeutic. It's helping heal our bodies. So I made a recording. 4 a.m., I get up, I go downstairs and I make this recording. I think it's roughly 30 minutes long. And it's kind of like, it's sort of like white noise guys it really is it's kind of like white noise and it doesn't have that annoying sound of the bees going in and out of the tube which really I thought was way distracting and I really do think that defeated the whole purpose of this so I went down 4 a.m. made the recording of the bees just humming it was just a low calm hum I want you to check it out and I made one where I put some synth wave music on there's this website that's really cool if you're into making videos it's a royalty free uh, music source and they got some pretty decent stuff on there. And all you gotta do is just make sure you give the author credit and it's a free license. And you can see that in my description. So this video explains what that video is because you're not gonna see me in it. And you're not gonna hear any of my intro music. It's just enjoy beekeeping and it's got the therapy sound. In conclusion, friends, wherever you are in the world, I hope that this video was entertaining at the very least and informative at the most. And I hope that you have a blast in your journey enjoying beekeeping.